Well, the Prophet mentioned that there would be the increase in the use of riba, which means usury, interest, credit cards, mortgages, things like that. In fact, the to the extent that no one would be able to escape the dust of it. Every hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl funny and good back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course don't forget to subscribe. We also have um, a second YouTube channel called Bunny and Jesse 2.0. Make sure to subscribe to that channel and guys at least get us to 100 subscribers so that we can start um, uploading on the other channel. The other channel is just made for vlogs, challenges, pranks and any other fun things that you want to see about our lives or anything else that goes on when you shoot what we shoot. I think I said I once said that I write, you can check out my blog, I think the link should be in the description down. Jesse is a photographer and together we create um, quite some good things. So yeah, today I'm going to be reacting to Signs of the Last Days and this one was suggested by JX. So yeah, without wasting any time, let's get into the video. That the Prophet Muhammad said that would happen before the end of time and of course the first thing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the first thing that he said would be the first of the signs of the last day is his death and the last day is soon upon us and that's what the Prophet said then 1400 years ago how close must it be now let's look at some of the things the Prophet Muhammad may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him said in various narrations. First of all, the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that amongst the signs of the last day is that you would see the barefooted Bedouins compete with each other in building tall buildings. This is remarkable because I invite anybody to look and go and visit Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain. These are places where 60 years ago I remember when I was in Kenya and they were complaining how there was no more money coming from Saudi Arabia after 9-11 and so on and so forth. And they were saying, well, you know, 60 years ago, we used to send money to Saudi Arabia to help the orphans and the madrasas there. Now you will find the people who only 60 years ago were barefooted Bedouins competing with each other in who can build the tallest building in the world. In fact, it said there's going to be six of the tallest buildings in the world in Dubai in the years to come. This is something the Prophet Muhammad was predicting 1,400 years ago. It is truly a sign of the last days. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also mentioned that the mosques would become like palaces. And this is the case, even though the Prophet وسلم, ordered simplicity in the houses of Allah, the fact is that they have become more and more fantastic and more and more money is being spent on these mosques with domes and floors and golden domes and floors and everything to match with so much lavish chandeliers and carpets like palaces, as the Prophet وسلم, said would happen. Also, the Prophet mentioned that trustworthiness would disappear so much so that a person would be able to say, I know a trustworthy person in such and such town. I ask you yourself if maybe that is not the case today. Also, the Prophet mentioned that there will be an increase in killing. The Prophet called it Harj to the extent that the one who is being killed and the one who is killing, they don't even know. The one who is being killed doesn't know why he's being killed. The one who is killing doesn't know why he is doing the killing. I think this is this describing the condition of some cities today where kids are shooting people. The person has no idea why he was shot. In fact, people are being shot merely 
just to prove themselves or for any type of madness that you can imagine. Not even to mention the massacres of so many people that is taking place due to terrorism, whether it is the terrorism of countries or the terrorism of organizations or individuals. We shouldn't really make a difference. It's all terror. When women and children and innocents get killed, it's terror by the hands of whoever it is. People do not know why they're killing or why they're being killed. To such an extent that it is unimaginable, just as the Prophet Muhammad predicted 1,400 years ago. Also, the Prophet mentioned that there would be the increase in the use of riba, which means usury, interest, credit cards, mortgages, things like that. In fact, the, to the extent that no one would be able to escape the dust of it, everybody will be affected by it. And this is without doubt the truth of the world economy today. The whole world economy is affected and controlled by banks and the use of interest money. Even though in Islam it is totally prohibited, even though in Christianity, up until the 16th, 17th century, riba was forbidden in Christendom as well. But yet today, it is something that controls the world economy to the extent that no one can escape it, just as the Prophet Muhammad predicted 1,400 years ago. The Prophet also said that there will be an increase in literacy in fact, so many people will be able to read and write, but actually knowledge will decrease. Isn't that a type of paradox? More people will read, and what do we end up reading? Most of us, we read rubbish. We read rubbish stuff. But we can read, but knowledge, especially knowledge of the religion, despite the fact that more people can read, ignorance has become prevalent. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said, that religious knowledge would decrease not by the books disappearing, not by, you know, knowledge being taken from the minds of the people. No, the knowledge in the sense of the books will be there, but the scholars, so that only ignorant people will remain. And people will ask them for religious verdicts, and they will give it, even though they are ignorant, and they will misguide themselves and misguide others. Anyone acquainted with the Muslim world today will be familiar with this. And the Prophet mentioned that the speakers will be many and the scholars will be few. And this is what we can find exactly. There are many speakers, many thinkers, many intellectuals, many people, alhamdulillah, giving dawah. Maybe not enough people, but the scholars, they are so few. And this is a type of sign of the last day that the scholars will be taken away. And this is exactly what we find happening. Also, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there will be such an increase in musical instruments and Muslims will make it lawful even though it is forbidden. The use of musical instruments, it has been forbidden by the Prophet. Some Muslims will make it lawful. And there are many people who are saying it's allowed, even though it is very clearly mentioned in Sahil Bukhari, the most authentic collection of hadith. And this is mentioned here. This hadith where the Prophet predicted that the people will make it lawful even though the Prophet made it unlawful and it has come true. Just as the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. Also, he mentioned there will be an increase in sexual promiscuity. Even though Islam is a religion that teaches chastity, that a man and a woman should confine themselves to marriage, the Prophet said there will be an increase in sexual promiscuity. And I don't think anyone can deny that that is the state of the world today with highly sexualized images, and even traditional societies that normally had a good traditional moral values. For example, like India, even in India, for example, promiscuity is becoming more and more common, hardly than it ever was before. Even in Muslim countries where the whole idea of sexual promiscuity is so against the teachings of Islam, it is unfortunately becoming more and more common. And the Prophet Muhammad said that because of this, diseases would appear that people had never heard of before. Isn't that the case? AIDS, for example, diseases that people had never heard of before will arise due to sexual promiscuity. And this has taken place just as the Prophet Muhammad predicted Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He mentioned that women will be naked although they are dressed. The dress of some women today, which in all but means is nakedness. With the clothes that are so tight, they describe every shape of the body. 
which this technology did not exist to make those type of clothes in the time of the Prophet. Yet the Prophet Muhammad is describing how this nakedness amongst the women will become prevalent. And also the Prophet mentioned that there will be shouting in the mosques, something that is prohibited in Islam. And it's something that I have witnessed myself. And also the Prophet said the worst and the most ignorant people will become the leaders. And really, I have to say, if we look at some of the world leaders today, even of some of the superpowers, it seems as if what the Prophet said about the worst and most ignorant people becoming leaders seems to have taken place, exactly as the Prophet Muhammad said. Also, he mentioned that a man will obey his wife and disobey his mother, something really contrary to the teachings of Islam. He will rather listen to his friends than listen to his father. And this is something that we have find happening in the Muslim world, even though this is so against the teachings of Islam. Men will wear gold and silk and they will make it lawful, even though the Prophet has made it unlawful. People will abandon the religion of Islam for a small worldly gain. And keeping onto the religion will be hold, like holding two hot coals. I am mentioning all of these things and there are many, many more things that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam mentioned. But these are some of the small signs concerning the events that will take place before the last day. And as we can see, these things that I have gone through almost without exception, they have come true in a way that is so, so clear and so, so obvious and so, so apparent. reinforcing things that we're already aware of. You shouldn't be ignorant of something that you're aware of. Like I always say, sit down and digest the information, process it, then see what you can do with it. He spoke about competition. If you're aware, many countries, not just Dubai, many countries are in competition with each other. Look at the issue of trade between um, China and the United States, instead of focusing on helping people that are poor, that need houses, that are focusing on how they can improve their countries who can have the tallest beauty, who can have this and that, it just doesn't make sense anymore. It's really insane that even though it would take less to save people, countries to decide to focus on um, what can I say? Other parts of the economy. This message.